Welcome back to the Daily Grind, everyone. Right here, I've got some beans planted, and then I built a trellis here. I've also got some black-eyed peas right there as well. So I planted these about a week ago, week and a half ago. They're already coming up, and they're doing really well. I'm going to bring you guys in. I'm going to show you guys exactly what I did and how I built this so you guys can mimic the same thing if you're interested. I'm in Texas here. We're in August and we're hitting temperatures of well over 100 every single day. Two days ago it was 105. Today it's going to be 101. But even so, there's not much that can grow in this kind of heat. But beans do fairly well. And right here I've got some marigold starts that I'm going to plant in between this trellis. And the nice thing about being in this trellis is those beans are going to almost shade those marigolds which do like full sun but they also don't really like the strong heat so that's going to be enough sun for them but it's also going to give a little bit of shade in the the late afternoon where we do get the really high temperatures so that's going to cool the soil a little bit for them and help keep them growing but the nice thing about marigolds is they're going to actually benefit the beans by bringing in beneficial insects both pollinator insects and also predatory insects without further ado let's get to it and I'll show you kind of what I did over the last couple weeks and how I prepared this bed and got these ready. Let's get to it. So first and foremost, I've got to take out this drip irrigation and then we're going to remove the mulch and throw it here. Now this is mulch from another bed that I had extra of. I'm just going to utilize it in here. But I unpop, I pop this off. I can always just put it right back in, but I pop this off to make this easier to fully remove. So I can just remove this all in one piece the way it is and we can just stick it back in the way it is as well. There we go and get the whole thing gone. Like so. Now we need to start removing the mulch. And this is probably the, the hardest, I wouldn't say the hardest, but the least enjoyable part of all this. All the mulch is gone and we've still got a few little pieces, but that's fine. That'll work its way into the soil. These are the roots of what was in before. So I had squash in here. I'm going to leave the roots because I'm doing kind of a no-till kind of thing now. I don't want to start turning these beds over. I want to keep the soil biome in there. So that's what I've got there. That's a, it's called a broad fork. And so that basically you're just going to create separation underneath, kind of open up the soil a little bit, allow some air circulation under there. This what I got here is a bucket of sulfur. And pH is probably one of the most important factors because if you've got the pH wrong, uh, your plant is not gonna be able to uptake some of the minerals and uh, nutrients that it needs. These things are $10 roughly. I'll link it in the description section, but this is a little meter and it tells the moisture content of the soil, the pH, and also how much light you're getting. I don't really use the light because I've got eyes, I can tell. But the, the pH is, is something I use a lot, and same with the moisture, because I can check to see if I am having issues with my drip irrigation and stuff. So this, this is a really handy tool, $10. Highly recommend getting it. I'm gonna go ahead and spread this sulfur around because that's gonna really kinda, that's gonna help. It's really one of the only things to be able to drop the pH plus adding some compost on top is gonna to help regulate that as well. I always add the same kind of contraption of different nutrients. So one is blood meal. Uh, sometimes it's more important than others. This is strict nitrogen. So I'm gonna add some of that right now. Although I'm, I'm planting beans, which pull nitrogen from the air. Um, and that's why I've got this. So this is from Haas Tools. It's uh, a granule garden soil inoculator. So. How beans work with pulling nitrogen out of the air is they work in tandem with a with the bacteria, I believe, it's some kind of microbe, and um, that basically forms nodules on their roots that feed the soil nitrogen. So they're literally pulling the nitrogen out of the air. You got nitrogen in the air, so they're pulling it out of the air and then dropping it down into the roots and putting it down into the soil. So actually, they are really good for adding nitrogen back into the soil. 
I'm gonna give it a little bit of nitrogen right now with the blood meal because early on in their young stage, they're, they're probably not forming as many nodules. So it's gonna help them grow really quick, but then over time, they'll be able to fix their own nitrogen. And that's where this is, this is the inoculant. This actually adds those microbes into the soil that allow them to uptake the nitrogen and put it into the soil. Most of these, you've got to soak the seeds in like a solution of it before planting. This one is a sprinkle on the bed type. So I like this because you just sprinkle it. It's like $16 and it should last, uh, I think it's, it's quite a bit. It treats up to 150 feet, feet of row. So we've got eight foot. So I probably use about a quarter of the can for this and it should be good enough. All right, the other important thing that I add is bone meal. This is probably the most important all the time. This helps with root development. It's all phosphate, which is what helps the plants produce roots and flowers. So, it, I mean, it's really important, okay? So then I've got a type of like all-purpose fertilizer, which is gonna be, um, the, this one's a 624. So um, this one is made from chicken manure. It is organic, all these are. Now it's time to get the compost. Now we gotta even this out. And the best tool I find for that is just the back of a rake. It's perfect for this application. All right, so now the bed is prepped and ready. I'm gonna come in and water this pretty heavily and let this sit for a day before I go ahead and plant my seeds, maybe a day or two, and then we'll get the seeds planted. So I just set up the trellis system here. And I'm sorry I didn't bring you guys along for this, but these cattle panels here come in four, I got it from Tractor Supply, by the way, so they're uh, 16 feet long and four feet wide. Uh, this is an eight foot bed. They're actually four foot, two inch, so I had to cut off a little bit off the side here. You can see um, these came out to here and they were just a little too long, but this worked out perfectly, so I cut off one square off the side here, they're six inches long. And then I cut them in uh, six foot pieces. And I got two of them. And I have some left over for other trellising needs. Uh, but then uh, on the bottom, because when I was cutting them, it left some longer, because I was cutting them here, so it left longer like kind of stakes. And that you can drive into the, the ground and hold it. But this is gonna be a perfect trellising system for green beans, which is what I'm planting. Also, one thing to keep in mind is this is six inches right here. So every six inches, I know um, I can, I can kind of use this as a grid to be able to plant and put the holes uh, and put the seeds. But pretty simple, guys. And then I just use zip ties for the top. If you know how to weld, you could probably weld these this way but i mean it might not be necessary it's probably easier to take it down and put it back up by just zip tying but that keeps it together and this is pretty stable this is not gonna move around too much uh even in the wind uh it's stuck in the ground and, and they're heavy so it shouldn't shouldn't blow over but i left a little room so i didn't put it right at the edge because i'm going to be planting the seeds right here uh along here and that'll allow it to grow up through the, the trellis. Now I've got all this open space in the center. I'm gonna fill with some flowers. So I've got some marigolds 
and nasturgeon that I have started the seeds of, and those should be ready maybe in two or three weeks. Probably once these beans start climbing up, I'll be able to get in and plant the flowers. And that'll bring in the pollinators, and I mean, it's just pretty good to have marigolds in your soil. Um, it helps keep some of the pests away as well. Let's get to this. I'm going to start planting here. We're going to make the holes and we're going to drop the seeds in. This is the two varieties I'm going to be planting. I'm actually doing two. One side is going to be one variety. The other is going to be the other variety. And this is the Kentucky Wonder pole bean and this is the Kentucky Blue. This is a one inch planting depth. Seed spacing three to four inch for both. And uh, let's get to it. Since we've got a seed spacing of three to four inch, we can use this grid, which is six inches, and do Make a little hole, about one inch deep. And then we can go ahead and right next to it, make another hole right in the center of that grid. There we go, now we've got a third. So we can, we can do this all the way down because I'm gonna do every three inch. You know, one thing I messed up on is I did not add the drip before I put up this trellis. So I'm going to see if I can weave it through uh, between the, the trellis system here. All right, so the drip irrigation is in. So first, I've got the little markers to let me know. This is Kentucky Wonder, this is Kentucky Blue. So that way I can keep track of where I planted what, so I don't forget. So we'll do that. And then here we go, here's the Kentucky Wonder. By the way, guys, I always like doing this. Today is August 3rd, okay? So we can keep track of how long this takes. And yes, I got these from Haas. This had a 85% germination rate. I think we got enough holes here. I'll probably just do one per hole. Um, I don't know. I don't want to come back through and thin them. Obviously, if I've got one that looks like that, we're not going to plant. We're only going to plant the good ones. So we'll make sure that we got the good ones put in. That one looks off and those two look off. All right, all the seeds are in. Now it's time to cover each one and then we're gonna water it in. This is all planted and ready. I've got one row of one type and the other row of the other type. Uh, Kentucky Blue and Kentucky uh, Wonder. And so we'll see how this, this does. Hopefully this is enough, I, I think there's enough height for them to grow up. I think they say five to six foot, that's six foot. But we'll let this uh, sprout. I'll come back and I'll show you the day that it sprouts. And then of course, we'll let this grow up a little bit before we start planting the flowers in here. I'm going to put a bunch of marigolds and nasturgums, like I said. Plus, this will give a little bit of a shade kind of to these, which uh, right now we're, we're like 100 degrees most every day uh, throughout all of August. So if we can shade out some of these, uh, that'll be really beneficial to those uh, flowers. So after these sprout and I get the flowers in, then I can come in and put the mulch in. So that's going to sit there for a couple weeks, um, which is fine. So I can then put the mulch back on top. Uh, which is going to be really beneficial to keeping that moisture in. I just want to make sure these are big enough that they don't have to sprout through mulch because that's going to be difficult for them. I just want to make sure that they come up 
Um, and once they're big enough, then I can put the mulch around. So that's, that's the plan. Today is August 7th. And this is the first day that we've had a sprout. Actually, yesterday this one started to come up. Um, but we've got, we've got a couple more. You can see here. So they're starting to come up only this row. So just this variety. And this is the Kentucky Wonder. So the Kentucky Blue Lake uh, is starting to also, you can see a couple of them here, but they're a little slower. That one popped up a little quicker, at least a couple of them. Today is super hot. Today is going to be 105 degrees. It's just insane. This is what we deal with in Texas, and this is why I'm growing beans. So there's not many crops that you can grow in 105 degrees. Uh, beans, kind of, they will struggle a little bit until it kind of starts to cool down. You got okra, you got corn, can kind of handle it. Really, these high temps, probably not. My corn's doing okay. I might have to put up a shade cloth for it. Uh, and the same thing with these beans. Um, over here, actually, if you look, this is southern peas. So uh, they're in the bean variety. But these actually really like the heat. So it's not going to be a problem with these. I planted these the exact same day that these were put in the ground as well. I went through and amended this bed, but you can see these are already starting and they, they started about two days before these did. So, uh, but they take a little longer to before harvest. These are a little quicker to get harvest, but there we go. So we finally got them to sprout. So I'll bring you guys back in a couple more days and we'll be able to see how they do in this heat. I am gonna have to come through right now though and water because they really need it. It's getting dry. So it is August 9th, and I think I've realized that these probably will not come up, the ones right here. But we do have a couple here that came up recently. Almost all of these have, so I'll have quite a few. Maybe not all of them. Same thing on this side, you can see. Almost all of them have popped up. One got chewed, unfortunately, and that one as well. Oh, that's unfortunate, but most of them have popped up. So that's really good. There's a couple filtered in between, but this should be plenty to be able to get a good harvest. So these did not have the best germination rate, but it's still pretty good. Now I'm gonna have to come through with some scissors and clip off the doubles. So I've got a couple doubles here. You can see there's two, and then there's two here. And then I've got a couple doubles over there. Uh, they need a little space to be able to gather the nutrients and stuff that they need, but these are looking healthy, the ones that did pop up. I'm missing a couple. There's actually one just popped up there. And over there, I'm missing one. Missing one there. It looks like I've got a little little seedling popping up. I'm missing one there and a couple along this row. But other than that, this is looking really good too. Really good germination. I did only put one per hole on this one. So, uh, well, that one has two right there. I think I dropped two and a couple of them accidentally, but it's looking really good. There's quite a few on this row here that I'm missing. I'll bring you guys back probably about two weeks, maybe a week and a half, and we'll see how these are growing. By then, we should get some starting to try to climb, and these are quick. Once they get established and start growing, they will just explode and go right up this real quick. Well, thanks for watching everyone. If you guys like this kind of content, please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates. Also, if you could hit the like button, it would really help me and the channel out. I will see you on the next video. Now you guys try to escape the daily grind.